Hello my dear students, welcome to my class. I hope the life processes that we discussed are now very very clear. And what did we discuss? We said that the sign of life that is the movement of the molecules. The movement of the molecules can be seen by us or may not be seen by us also. Now, For example, the movement of the molecule may be in case of nutrition that the food molecule is moving in or it may be in respiration that is the movement of the oxygen is taking place in the animal body or the movement of the molecule may be in transportation that is when the molecules are moving from one place of the living organism to some other part of the body of the living organism or the movement of the molecule may also occur in excretion when the waste products are moved from the cells to the excretory organs. Is that enough? Are these the movements that we see in the living organisms? Not really. We also see that we respond to the environment in which we live. That means if I am saying my dear children right now are you studying your answer will be yes. Isn't it? Now if your mother calls you immediately you respond and not only the sounds when you see something you tend to think about it and you also respond and if you touch a hot object by mistake what is the reaction? Immediately you pull your hand within a fraction of a second. So our body is also responding to the environment in which we live. My dear students that comes to control and coordination that is the nervous system that we are talking about. Yes, we have a system in the animals which is responsible for response to the stimulus. Now what is stimulus? Stimulus means any change in the environment. Just now we discussed if I ask a question you hear that and you give an answer that is response. Now similarly if you are touching a hot object that heat is the stimulus that caused the action and not only the human beings what about the other plants and animals you see that deer trying to save his life when the deer sees the lion that means predator. So we see that response to the stimuli is in all the living organisms. Now what is the controlling factor of these kind of responses? It is actually controlled by the nervous system. Now what is nervous system? We say that brain is the boss. Yes, the brain is controlling all the changes which are occurring inside our bodies and not only that the brain is responsible for letting us communicate to the world in the form of receptors. Now what are receptors? You already know the structure of the nerve cell, right? Yes, the nerve cell is the longest cell in the human body and it is a very long fiber like structure. It has a cell body which is like a star. It has lot of small branches which are known as dendrites. In the center there is nucleus and there is a very long hair like structure which we call as axon. And then again very small branches which we call as nerve endings. Now this works like an electrical wire. Now when we say that I call you and you respond, you are hearing the sound. And if you are moving and somebody is touching you, immediately you feel that. So we have receptors all over our skin also. We have receptors in all the sense organs. So you are able to hear, you are able to smell, you are able to taste and you are able to feel. If you are carrying a book in your hand, that consciousness that you have something in your hand, that is because of the receptors which are present in the skin. Similarly, when you are hearing, that is because of the receptors which are present in the inner ear. Obviously, when you are able to smell a very very good food and the mouth waters, that is again the action which is controlled by the brain, that is the nervous system. So, how this information is carried by the receptors. So the nerve cells have special tips which are known as receptors and these are responsible for receiving the information from the environment. And the information that these tips receive is known as the stimulus and we respond to that. So what are the different type of receptors? The gustatory receptors are responsible for taste, yes. So these receptors are present on the tongue. So if you are eating the food and you say it is very very tasty, that means the gustatory receptors are at work. If the gustatory receptors are not there, the food will be tasteless. And would you be able to enjoy that? Not at all. Then what about the digestive system? If you are not going to eat that food, then the stomach will be empty, you are not going to eat that and no energy at all. 
So we can say the receptors are many times responsible for you to eat the food and get energy. Now the olfactory receptors are present in the nose and they are responsible for the smell that you get. So if you have a very good smell, you really enjoy it and if you see a garbage stinking, you move away from that. So what is that difference due to? That is again because of the receptors. We have receptors all over our skin because it is also a sense organ and as a result, you are able to save your life. Yes, because if there is fire and if accidentally your hand touches that, you feel hot and as a result, you move your hand away. So all this is controlled by the nerve cells. Now the nerve cell is responsible for carrying the information from the brain to all the organs and from the organs to the brain. Yes, you have a doubt? Ma'am, is there any part of the body without receptors? Very good question. I have a very attentive student in my class. See, when we are talking about receptors, we are saying that the receptors are able to receive the information and give the response. Now, there are some parts of the body which are without receptors also and you will be able to understand properly what we are talking about right now. For example, the extensions of the nail, right? The outgrowth of the nails which you cut with the help of a nail cutter. That extension is not having any receptor. So, you can cut it and you are not able to even know, you do not feel any pain. You are yourself cutting that part of the body. So, when you were very, very small, that means a bunch of happiness, then your mother used to cut your outgrown nails with the help of nail cutter when you were sleeping, so that you do not get hurt. Isn't it interesting? Similarly, now you are grown up, we can talk about the hairstyles that you make. So, the extensions of the hair, yes, you go for different kind of hairstyles and you pay money to the barber also that I want this kind of cut, I want this kind of cut and you are very happy. And what the man is doing is simply cutting the extensions of the hair. You fight with that person, not at all, you are actually rewarding that. So that means the extensions of the hair do not have any receptors. I will turn this into another situation. Situation number two, you come back home, you have a fight with your brother and your brother pulls your hair. Then yes, there will be a huge fight because you are going to feel pain. The reason is that when the hair is pulled, you have the root of the hair in contact with the nerve cells and that resulted in the pain that you have. Similarly, if accidentally you cut the nail which is attached to the skin, again the same result that is you are going to feel pain. So here we can understand that if the receptors are able to receive the information, then we feel something. And if that part is cut, that means no receptors at all. It is not able to receive the stimulus. Yes, of course, stimulus was there. When you are cutting the hair, stimulus is there, but you are not feeling it. So receptors make us feel the stimulus and accordingly we respond. Now we are going to study how this information passes. The information is received by the dendrites. So the dendritic tips, they receive the information and immediately a chemical reaction is set off. Yes, it is a complicated system and the message travels in the form of electrical impulses. So as soon as the chemical reaction sets off, that creates an electrical impulse. This electrical impulse travels to the cell body, then to the axon which is the longest part of the nerve cell and ultimately it is able to create a chemical reaction at the end that is a gap. So a gap between the two neurons is present and that gap is known as synapse. So the axon releases certain chemicals in the synapse. Now these chemicals are received by the next neuron which is in line and as a result again a chemical reaction is set off that creates an electrical impulse. So you have the alternate mechanism a chemical reaction, electrical impulse, then chemical reaction, then electrical impulse and the speed is enormous. The messages travel in a very, very fast manner. We do not even realize. For example, touch a hot object, you are going to feel the hotness and within a second you are able to remove your hand. So what happened? During this time, you got the stimulus, the brain decided what to do and you showed the reaction also. So the messages travel in a real, real fast manner. So this is the general scheme of how the impulses travel in the nervous tissue. Yes? Ma'am, 
what happens if the impulse does not travel yes a very good question the more you ask the more you learn now if the impulses do not travel then what is going to happen we just now discussed that when the impulse is able to reach the target then we show action for example we can discuss the same example if we touch a hot object and let us say the impulse did not travel at all yes of course it will be a very dangerous situation because you are not going to move your hand the reason is the impulse is not moving forward and as a result we will not be able to show any action and just imagine the hand on the hot object or in the fire for a very long time and that is going to result in burning of the hand so that is the importance of the impulse being traveling in the nerves and reaching the target organ then only the target organ is able to show the action so can i ask you some questions just to check whether you are paying attention or not give me the name of that part of the nerve cell which is responsible for receiving the messages ma'am dendrites yes very good now can you name that part of the nerve cell through which the message travels in the form of electrical impulse ma'am axon very good so pay attention and you can learn alongside this right now we move on to the next one that is the neuromuscular junction now just now we discussed that in between the two neurons there is a gap and that is known as synapse the gap is there and the chemicals are released in this gap now just come to the end when we are saying that we have to move our hand we know that the movement is also because of the muscles actually we say that we are able to move because of the energy which is stored in the muscles and what is neuromuscular junction yes the two together that is the nerves and the muscles so at the end when you have to move your hand or the muscle has to show the action then the message has to be transferred to the muscle so this part where the nerve is attached to the muscle is known as neuromuscular junction now the electrical impulse is traveling through the nerve and the message is immediately transferred onto the muscle as a result now the muscle is going to contract and this action is caused so where nerve and the muscle join together that is known as neuromuscular junction so my dear students revise it properly and do the questions i'll see you in the next class and now my dear students let's summarize all the important points control and coordination of the body is done by nervous and muscular tissue receptors the specialized tips of neurons which detect the information from the environment the path of the nerve impulse is as follows the stimulus received by the dendrite goes to the cell body goes to the axon goes to the nerve ending and the synapse and then to the dendrite of the next neuron and now my dear children to watch the next video please attempt the following questions question number 1 the gap between two neurons is called a dendrite b synapse c axon d neuromuscular junction question number 2 the receptors which detect taste are called a olfactory receptors b gustatory receptors c thigmo receptors d photo receptors question number 3 the longest cell in the human body is a nerve cell b muscle fiber c liver cell d bone cell